Difficult to turn back to the Almighty after they have led a life filled with sin. And Shaitan has a plan that he thinks works. And sometimes out of our ignorance, we fall into his trap. So at the beginning, he wants us to transgress. So we start committing the sins one after the other. You know, when you sin and you regret it, then that's a good sign. Regret is only a sign because you believe that Allah is, you, you know, uh, going to hold you responsible for what you're doing. So you regret it. And there comes a time when you commit the sin again and again. When you don't regret it anymore, you don't think about it. And then it becomes major. And this is why when you commit minor sins for a long time, it actually becomes major sin. So Shaitan comes and makes you commit these sins. So now you're away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah gives you reminders every other day, different ways, whether it's a health matter, whether it's something social, whether it's uh, whatever your economics, whatever else might be situation that is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tap you on the shoulders. Hey, you need to turn. You cannot continue leading your life in this way. You cannot oppress people. You cannot harm and hurt others. You cannot forget about us. So that's the mercy of Allah. Then you want to turn back to Allah. But shaitan keeps telling you, no, you're not good enough. You've committed the biggest sins. Your sins are too big. You've committed adultery. You've gambled. You've been on intoxicants. You've actually done whatever there is in the book to be committed in terms of sin. Astaghfirullah. So shaitan tells you, no hope for you. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Az-Zumar. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He will forgive every single sin of yours. He is most forgiving, most merciful. That is Allah speaking to you and I. Subhanallah. Allah says, Oh, you who have transgressed against yourselves. That's what Allah is telling us. So remember, when Allah says, Don't lose hope in my mercy, now Shaitan comes. He's very upset. He had you in his clutch. You were sinning. He was excited. He was proving a point to Allah. You see, I told you these guys are not going to worship you. They're going to worship me. Now, when you're turning to Allah, he's losing grip. And so he comes to you and says, You're not good enough. You're not going to be forgiven. So as you seek that forgiveness, there comes a time when he makes you start thinking you have not been forgiven. Did you know my brothers and sisters? The first time you seek forgiveness from a sin, if you've done it sincerely, you repenting, you regret it and you don't want to commit it again. That sin is wiped out. When? The first time you seek forgiveness, it's already wiped out. Look at Adam alayhi salam. Him and Eve, may peace be upon them. Hawa alayhi salam. When they ate from the tree, it was the only thing Allah told them not to do. They did it. When they did that, they just told Allah, Oh Allah, we regret it and we seek your forgiveness. If you don't forgive us, we're going to be from among the losers. Allah says, I've forgiven you. Subhanallah. As straightforward as that. They asked for it once. And they had committed a major sin and they asked forgiveness and Allah forgave them. And Allah says, didn't I warn you about the devil? They said, we know, but we, we were wrong and we're sorry and we apologize and we repent and so on. Allah says, it's okay, forgiven. Now you can go on to the earth and this is what should happen. Whenever someone has faulted, they should seek my forgiveness. So we are just human. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't think you're not going to be forgiven. You will falter, not out of the defiance of Allah. You will falter out of human nature, weakness. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, never let your past haunt you to the degree that it hinders your relationship with Allah. That is something. Never let your past haunt you to the degree that you don't believe in the mercy of Allah or you don't understand who is Allah. You're dealing with Rabbun Ghafoorun Rahimun Wadudun MashaAllah. You're dealing with Rahman as Samawati Wal Ard Wa Rahimahuma. You're dealing with the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most kind, the most forgiving, the most merciful, etc., etc. The one whose mercy is incomparable to anyone or anything. The one who would have more mercy on you 
than your mother could have ever had mercy upon you. That is Allah. When you tell him, oh Allah, forgive me, it is wiped out. So we keep on repeating that tawbah or we keep on asking for forgiveness again and again, not because we're doubting that he has or has not forgiven us. We should know he has forgiven us. Conviction, convinced, smile and move on, subhanAllah. But we repeat it in order to develop a better relationship with Allah. Oh Allah, I'm so sorry. You know, when you love someone, you've uh, hurt them or harmed them. They love you too. And you say, look, I'm very sorry for what I said the other day. And they say, nah, it's okay. Don't worry. Forgiven, forgotten. And let's not talk about it. A day later, you say, hey, it's hurting me. You know, I'm so sorry. What I, they say, I told you it's okay. A day later, you tell them, but I'm still thinking about it. You know, it pains me how I spoke to you or what I said. And they say, no, 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 it's fine. Why are you repeating it? Because there is a sense of true regret. So when you repeat it, it should make you feel good. It's a sign you have a good relationship with Allah. Not that you're doubting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a beautiful relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the whole reason why you are continually seeking forgiveness and Allah elevates your status more and more. Then there are some sins we don't even know we've committed. Those are automatically forgiven when you do good deeds. The Quran says, when you do good deeds, they automatically wipe out minor sin, the, the bad deeds that are minor, that you might not even know of, or you may have known about them, but they are small sins. But we are talking of massive sins, the big sins. Yes, you engaged in all of that intoxicants and whatever it may have been, and you did this and did that. You know what? The one who seeks forgiveness from a sin is equivalent to he or she who did not commit the sin in the first place. And Allah says, if you change your life after you led a bad life solely for my sake, I'm going to go back into your records and convert all the bad into good because you only quit it because of your love of me, your relationship with me. Subhanallah. So. If you want your bad deeds to be changed into good deeds, the condition is after repentance, you must actually change your life, your ways, and you must do good deeds. Then Allah will go back, take those bad deeds and convert them into good. But if you have just sought forgiveness at that juncture, your sins are wiped out. Now we have a little problem. The problem is when you commit a sin, Allah judges you by your repentance and not by the sin. If you have repented, good news. If you haven't, bad news. So seek forgiveness and constantly seek forgiveness of Allah and have hope in the mercy of Allah. You are just a human. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't ever think Allah is not merciful because that is a bigger sin than the original sin that you committed because when you committed the adultery or when you committed the sin that you did, whether it was in participating or partaking of intoxicants, etc., etc., that was a sin you committed against Allah, yet you knew who Allah was. Right now, when you're doubting the mercy of Allah, you're doubting Allah. So you're now not even knowing who you're talking to. And you're not, know, you're not understanding the greatness of this Lord who has created you and loves you and wants goodness for you. The Quran says, Wallahu yuridu an yatuba alaykum wa yuridu alladhina yattabi'una ash-shahawati an tamilu maylan azima. Allah says, Allah wants to forgive you. Allah's aim is to forgive you. That's the whole reason why he put man on earth. Because on one hand, he has the angels who don't commit sin at all. They don't have the capacity to commit sin. And on the other hand, you have the devil who, who does not seek forgiveness because he sins out of defiance of Allah. It's like he tells Allah, you told me to prostrate. I'm not going to do that. What are you going to do about it? Astaghfirullah, we as insan, humankind, believers would never do that. So you have the devil on one hand, the angels on the other. We are in the middle. We commit sin out of human weakness, but we come back to Allah. And how often should we come back to Allah? Every day. When will we sin? We may sin at any time. Shaitan can come and try and trap us. The beauty is if you've been following shaitan for 70 years and one day you shed a warm tear of repentance, it wipes out 70 years of sin. Remember that. So no matter what you've done and how long you've led a life away from the Almighty, a moment of truth will bring you straight back, back on track and you have a lovely relationship.
Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.